Okay, so we've been having some fun looking at how to expand these interesting algebraic expressions. And we're looking at things like, you know, x plus y all to the n. And we now see that even though it's a great guess to say that this equals x to the n plus y to the n, we see that's really wrong. That's a great classic mistake. In fact, what we have to do in some sense is imagine taking x plus y and multiplying it by itself n times. And then doing all that foiling until we get the answer. The question is, is there a more systematic way of doing it? And the great thing is there is. And we saw the, the binomial coefficient, the, um, the Pascal's triangle as a way to, to do small examples. But now let's consider the more general case. If I really want to expand this out, we know there are going to be lots and lots of terms. And the terms are going to kind of have this basic, basic flavor. They're going to have some number times x to the n times y to the 0, plus some other coefficient times x to the n minus 1 times y to the 1, and then all the way down till I get to some number times x to the 0 times y to the n. So this is a really complicated looking thing, but it's just a generalization of what we've already seen. And the question now is, we know all the x and y terms. They're very systematic. x to the highest power times y to the 0, x to the next highest power times y to the first, all the way down till x to the 0 power, y to the highest power. The big question mark is, what are these mysterious coefficients? Well, since we're expanding a binomial, not surprisingly, these things are called binomial coefficients. And let me show you how they work. These are just great. You've got to love them. And it's actually very, very important in, in a lot of advanced mathematics, in fact. First, I want to begin with something that's going to give you a lot of pow. I'm going to look at n. Well, not really. It's actually called n factorial. But that exclamation mark wants you to get really excited. n factorial. And the definition is it, you just take that natural number and you keep multiplying it by its predecessors until you get all the way down to 1. It's the product of all the numbers from 1 to n, all the natural numbers from 1 to n. So let's just take a look at some examples here just for fun. These are great, by the way, because they're just so much fun to do. You, you, when in life do you get to write down a whole bunch of numbers and multiply them? Well, I guess in math. But OK, so 4, 4 factorial is what? It's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, of course, you don't have to write the 1 in, because 1 times anything, of course, is the anything. But I like to write it in just to remind me what the factorial really means. And so you have to multiply this together. And so we see 4 times 3, which is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. Times 1 is 24. So there's the answer, 24. 4 factorial is 24. You can see why the factorial has that kind of symbol, right? It's like just with 4, boom, we get a big number, like 24. Kind of cool. All right, what about 5 factorial? Well, 5 factorial, that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I want you to notice something interesting about this example. There's like a deja vu. Do you see that it's actually 4 factorial times 5? There's a way of using the previous answer to get to this answer, because this right here is just 4 factorial, isn't it? So 5 factorial is nothing more than 5 times the previous factorial. 4 factorial. So 5 times 4 factorial is 5 times 24, which is 120. So sometimes you can use previous work, and this is very important, to actually do the, the current work. OK, anyway, okay, that gives us a little warm up here. Now you're ready for the actual coefficient, the actual coefficient. And I wish I had four blocks. If I had four identical blocks, I would be so happy. And I bet you, by the end of this lecture, I'm going to have four identical blocks. Let's see. Anyway, here's the definition, and this is a crazy way of writing it. This is called the, the a binomial coefficient, and it's read n choose m. n choose m. And it's written in this kind of this funny way. It's not a fraction. It's just a way of expressing n choose m. And the definition of this is n factorial, which we know what it is, divided by m factorial times n minus m factorial. Now, it's a very peculiar definition, but the really cool thing is this is exactly the binomial coefficients, exactly the binomial coefficients. So let me show you with some examples of, first of all, how to compute this thing. So first of all, uh, let's look at this. Now, the way you would read this, like if you're reading a, a children's story to your you know, little brother, little sister, you would not read this you know, 4 over 1. You'd say 4 choose 1. 4 choose 1. What's the definition? We first take 4 factorial, and we divide it by 1 factorial, and we multiply that by 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1, which is 3 factorial. 
And so what does this equal? Well, this equals 4 factorial over 3 factorial. Now, you can actually compute these things, but let me show you how I do them. I take this as 4 times 3 factorial. Remember what we saw last time. 1 factorial is just 1 times 1, which is 1, so I'm going to drop that out. And 3 factorial, look what happens. You see how I can now cancel? 3 factorial is actually the number 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So I have a 6 factor on the top and a bottom. I cancel, and I get the answer of 4. So 4 choose 1 is 4. And think about it. That makes sense. If I have four objects and I want to choose one of them, see, I told you there'd be blocks. You thought I was kidding. I never kid. Four identical blocks. How many different ways are there for me to choose just one of them? Well, I could choose this one. I could choose this one, I could choose this one, or this one. There are four different ways, and that's what this number represents. How many different ways there are of choosing, out of a group of four, exactly one of them? Let's try another example together, just to get a, a sense of these things. Let's try four choose two. So four choose two, what does that equal? Well, by this formula, it's four factorial divided by two factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial. Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, so it's another 2 factorial. So I have 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Quick thing would be to say, oh, it's 1, because 2 times 2 is 4, and I cancel. That's wrong. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. You've got to write it out. When in doubt, write it out. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then what's this? This is 2 times 1, and this is 2 times 1. Now, 2 times 2 is 4. So that can cancel with this. And so what I could see here is a little cancellation of this 4 with this 4. Now I just have 1's downstairs. And what do I have on the top? I see 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6. And so the answer is this is 6. This is 6. What does this mean? What it means is if I have four identical objects, like let's say four green cubes, and I now want to select two of them, I want to select two of them, how can I do it? How many different ways are there to select two of them? It turns out there must be six different ways. I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. Here are the six different ways of picking two. There's these two, that's one way. There's these two, that's two. There's these two, that's three. There's these two, that's four. Uh-oh, where are the other two? Well, there's these two, that's five, and there's these two, that's six. That's what six means here. It's the number of ways of picking two things from a collection of four. Isn't that cool? I love it. Love it. And now, if you put it all together, what you actually see is that this gives you the power to figure out any expansion. Let's just try one last example, just for fun. Let's try a beefy one. Let's try this. Again, this is not 8 over 5. We read this as 8 choose 5. So here's the question. If I have 8 things, how many different ways are there to pick 5 of them? A lot. Well, let's figure it out. So what do we do? Here's the formula. It's 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 8 minus 5. Well, 8 minus 5 is 3, so that's 3 factorial. And what does this equal? Well, this equals 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. You can put the factorial whenever you want, as long as it's at the end. 5 factorial times, and then what's 3 factorial? It's 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. Notice the 5 factorials cancel, the 6 cancels, and I'm left with 8 times 7, which is the whopping 56. So there are 56 different ways of picking 5 things from 8. Isn't that amazing? Now, let me show you why this is so cool. We can now, in fact, reveal what's called the binomial the binomial formula. It looks really, really complicated and crazy, but trust me, this is actually totally doable. Totally doable. I, we're going long here, but I want to show this to you because it's so important to me. So, if you have x plus y to the n, it actually equals exactly this expression. Where notice the coefficient on the leading term, the x to the n term, is just an, a 1. And the coefficient on the very, very last term is also a 1. The y to the n just has a coefficient of 1. And everywhere in between, we just see successive binomial coefficients. n choose 1, n choose 2, all the way out to n choose n minus 1. So all you have to do is compute these things using the formula, and you can do like 1 to the billionth power, 1 to the trillionth power. You can do any power at all. Now, we already saw that we could find those coefficients using Pascal's triangle, and that's awesome. So these coefficients actually conform with Pascal's triangle. And for example, if you notice here, 
4 choose 2 is 6, and that corresponds to level 4. If you choose 1, 2, there's that 6. That 6 and this 6 are the exact same 6. So they correspond. You can always use Pascal's triangle, but now you can do things when, in fact, the numbers are huge. Suppose your teacher asked you a real big one. Well, now you can do it. No, no, no problem at all. So let's try a couple examples because I know you want to see examples. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Stay with me. All right, so let's take a look at uh, 2a minus b all cubed. And let's try to use this new cool formula that we have just discovered. There's so much stuff here, it's hard to know even where to put things. You notice that? All right, so what am I going to do here? What I'm going to try to do here is I am going to use this formula with n equals 3. And x is going to be 2a, and y is going to be, now you might say y is going to be b. But that's wrong. It has to be x plus y. So in this case, this is 2a plus negative b. So y is going to be played by negative b here. And then we just go through the formula and see. So let me write this out for you and see exactly what this looks like. This would equal what? Well, the first term I have is the x to the 3. So I have 2a all cubed. Then I have plus, and then I have n, which is 3, 3 choose 1, times 2a squared times negative b to the first power. Do You see, I'm taking the general formula, and I'm trying to apply it now to, to this one. Let's take a look at the next term. The next term is a plus 3 choose 2. That's the next thing on my list. And now my x is 2a to the first power. And then I have a y, which is negative b squared. And now we're down to the very, very last thing. Since I'm at 3, I'm at my very last power. And that's going to be plus 3 choose 3, which is 1. So I'm just going to write it as like 1. And say it's just negative b cubed. Great. Now all I have to do is simplify this. That's all. So simplifying this. What, well, I've got to compute all these binomial coefficients. Let me just actually, for fun, let me just use since we know the binomial coefficients are going to be the level 3 Pascal triangle, I see the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1. And you can compute 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, and you're going to see 3's. So this equals 2 cubed, which is 8, a cubed. And then notice the negative sign here. That makes it a minus 3. This thing is a 3. 3 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So I have negative 12 a squared b. And then I have a negative b, but I'm negative b, but I'm squaring it, so it becomes a positive. 3 choose 2 works out to be 3, so I have 3 times 2, which is plus 6a times b squared. And then my final term is negative b cubed, and negative b cubed is just negative b cubed. Look how beautiful that is. So we actually worked out exactly, exactly what this equals using the binomial using the binomial theorem, which is awesome. All right, how about one more? Are you up for one more? Let me just do one more. One more, and then I promise, even though you want to keep going, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop all this. But let's take one that's really exciting. Check this out. x squared plus square root of 3 to the fourth. Now let's use the method again. Remember, n is now going to be 4. So what is this equal? Well, let me show you. This equals the x here is going to be played by x squared, and the y is going to be played by the square root of 3. Now we just go through the formula. The first term is always the same. It's going to be whatever the thing here is, in this case x squared, raised to the n, which in this case is 4. And then I have 4 choose 1 times this term, x squared, to the third power. I keep reducing the powers on the first term and raising the powers on the other terms. So then I have times the square root of 3 now to the first power, plus 4 choose 2. You see I just go to the next one, 4 choose 2, times x squared to the squared power, the second power. I'm, I'm reducing this. And then I've got the cube root of 3 to what power? This one I raise. I raise this power. And then I have to keep going, but I'm just going to continue writing on this line if you don't mind. Plus. 
And then what's the next one? Four choose three. You see the pattern? It's so nice. And then I have x squared to the first power times the square root of three cubed. And then that very, very last term is just the square root of three to the fourth power. And now what I've got to do, all I've got to do is literally go off, run off, and, and do these little binomial coefficient calculations. Now we've already done some of these, right? Uh, four choose one, we did that at the beginning. We saw that was four. Four choose two, we, we did that actually at the beginning too. Remember, it's right here. We got six. So we know this is um, a four. We know this is six. What about four choose three? Let me just do that one for you really, really fast because you're going to love this. Oh, are you gonna you're going to love it, love it. Let me check it out. It's four factorial, and you can start doing this quickly. Three factorial times four minus three factorial. Four minus three is just one. One factorial is one times itself, which is one. So this is just four times three factorial over three factorial. The factorial threes cancel. I'm just left with four, so the answer is four. So the coefficient, you can see, is just going to be uh, four, four, six, four, and one. And notice, by the way, that does correspond to the old Pascal triangle. Four, six, four. OK, and so now we put it all together, but now we also have to do some algebra. So what's x squared to the fourth? We multiply the, the exponents, and so I see x to the eighth power. And then four choose one, we already said that is actually four. And four times the square root of three is plus four square roots of three. And x to what power? I have x squared cubed, which is x to the sixth. I multiplied the exponents. And then plus, and then here I have four choose two, which we worked out. We computed to be uh, six, and we take six times, but the square root of three squared is three. Three times six is 18. So I have 18 times x to the squared squared, which is x to the fourth. See how nice this is? Then four choose three, we just calculated to be four. And then what's the square root of three cubed? Well, square root of three times square root of three is three. And then I have an extra square root of three, so that's three square roots of three. Three square roots of three, well, three times the four is 12. So I have 12 square roots of three times x squared. And then that last term is going to be the square root of three to the fourth. That's square root of three times square root of three, which is three. Square root of three times square root of three, which is three. Three times three, of course, you know is nine. And so check it out. This beautiful polynomial, x to the eighth plus four square root of three, x to the sixth plus 18, x to the fourth plus 12 square root of three, x squared plus nine, actually is the same thing as this very compact looking x squared plus square root of three all to the fourth. Lots of intermediate terms. Using the binomial theorem and binomial coefficients, you can now have the power to compute any power, even 400. And of course, there are computers that do this for us, but you can always do it by hand just using this theorem and this definition. Congratulations on conquering binomial coefficients and the binomial theorem. I'll see you soon.